Hi, I'm Patrick Fuller. This is Effective Martial Arts. In this lesson, the clinch 101. Basic positions and how to escape. All right, so the clinch is a stand-up fighting situation in which one or both fighters are holding on to a part of the other's body. Now this can be used to execute powerful strikes, so controlling your opponent's posture in order to land punches, elbows, or knees, or to go for a takedown, so a sweep, a trip, a shoot, projection, or body lock takedown. What can also happen as well is to go for standing submissions, which is a little bit less common. Now, there is a world of techniques that are possible in the clinch. Entire martial arts are devoted to the study of this range of fighting. And with good reason, because most often than not, fights will transition at some point or another through some form of clinch fighting situation. So knowing what to do in the clinch is an essential part of your martial arts education and self-defense training. Now, we're going to keep it very simple for the purpose of this video. We're going to cover the basic positions as well as how to escape if you don't want to be there. First things first, let's get right into it. Alright, so let's start by doing a quick overview of the basic clinch positions. So there are two basic types of clinch, the first one being head control clinch, the other being body control clinch. Now in terms of head control, we have three variants. The first one being double head control. That's when one person has both hands wrapped behind the person's head like so, and the elbows pressed against the collarbones. In this case, what the person having the clinch is going to try to do is to break the other's posture, so bring the head down and pressing the elbows inside the collarbone at the same time to break the posture. At the same time as well, the elbows, you're going to try to squeeze your elbows together to lock the head in. Now this is a dangerous position to be in because you're exposed to knees to the face, so you're going to want to get out of this position. The other variant is the single head control, so that's when you have one hand holding the head like so, also the elbow driving into the collarbone, and here it's also kind of dangerous because you're exposed to punches and elbows. The last variant of head control clinch is the 50-50 position or head and elbow control. So we're both holding on, we have the same position, we're holding on to the other person's head, the elbow is driving into the collarbone, and we're both going to be holding on to each other's elbow. From here we're going to be fighting for position, trying to go for a takedown, or we can be exchanging strikes. Next up, we've got body control clinch. So the first, the worst position you can be in is the back body lock. When you're here, one person has the chest to the other person's back and has both hands underneath the arms here, locked in front in a body lock situation. From here, it's very dangerous for the person on the inside because they can get picked up and they can get taken down. This is also possible with both arms in like so or one arm in. Next up, we have the front body lock, so that's very similar, but we have chest to chest position. One person, both arms in underhook position here, locked on the body, and that's also very dangerous because you can get taken down in this position. And the last variant of body control clinch is the 50-50 or over-under position. That's where we both have one arm underneath the other person's arm, grabbing onto the body, and we're both going to be holding on to the other person's triceps over here. We're going to be shoulder to shoulder. Here we're going to be fighting for position, trying to exchange strikes, or trying to go for a takedown. Now, let's look at escapes. All right, so first up, let's look at head control clinch escapes. Let's start with the absolute worst situation you can find yourself in, which is double head control when your posture is already broken. This is very dangerous because you got knees coming to the face. So here you're gonna use the X block to push back escape. So here, the person has broken your posture and you know the knee is coming, so you gotta block that knee. So, person loads the knees, you get the arms in front and you block with an X position with the arms like this, nice and strong, because the knee can be quite powerful. From here, as soon as the knee is done, you're gonna bet both hands on the hips like this and push the person away as you get your head down so you slip out of the clinch and step back so you're out of the position. Once again, a little bit faster, so I break the posture, she knows the knee is coming, so she's gonna block it, hands on the hips, push back, head down, step back, and we're back to striking. Once again, I'll do it alone so you can see better. So imagine somebody is clinching my head like this, so the hands are on top of the head, both forearms on the side here. So my posture is broken, I'm going down, I know the knee is coming to the face. So I need to block that. I'm gonna do an X block over here. 45 degrees with the elbows. I don't wanna be too close here because then the knee can make me hit myself. So I'm gonna block like this, and then I wanna block quite powerfully because the knee can be quite strong. So I wanna use shoulders, elbows, and wrist to have good power in the block like this to stop the knee in its tracks. And then as soon as the knee is done, both hands on the hips, I want to push away, get my head down to slip out of the clinch, take a step back at the same time, and we're back to striking. Next escape from double head control is the cross face escape. This is possible either pushing the head up and back or the head to the side. 
Now, first variation, cross face up. So here, person has the double head control, but he is not yet breaking your posture. So you want to maintain the head up to resist against the person trying to bring you down. If you have this, you can use the cross face escape. So you're going to hold on to one elbow over here, get the other arm inside in between my elbows, get it underneath my chin like this. So I'm going to want to resist. The person with head control, if they know what they're doing, they're going to want to keep their chin down like so. So you need to force straight up against the chin to get the head back. And once you have this, it's very hard for me to resist. She's going to keep on extending her arm to eventually break my grip, and we're back to striking. Once again, a little bit faster, so she controls one elbow, turns her body to the side, hand underneath the chin, pushes straight up, and extends to break the grip. The variation of this is the side cross face escape. So in this case, she's going to slide one arm over both elbows like so, break the posture a little bit like this, and then get her other arm on the side of my chin. Again, I want to resist by keeping my chin down, but the neck muscles aren't that strong. So if she pushes, she can get my head to the side like this, and once she has that, she turns her body, extends all the way, breaks my grip, and we're back to striking. Once again, a little bit faster, so hand across both elbows, breaks the grip, hand on the chin, push the head to the side, and escape. The other thing you can do from double head control, postured up position, is the arm lace escape. So in this case, she's going to slide one arm over one elbow and underneath the other with the palm facing down. Then she's going to bring her other palm stuck to the first palm and push straight up on my elbow here as she ducks under to get out of the position. Then she keeps on pushing to get away and we're back to striking. Once again, a little bit faster, so I have double head control. She slides one arm over one elbow underneath the other, palm to palm, push up, duck under, push away and back to striking. The last technique you can do from double head control is not quite an escape, but it's a transition to a more neutral or eventually dominant position. So we call this a swimming transition. So in this case, I have double head control over here. She's going to get one arm in here, so slide the arm on the inside, and then gain head control on that side. And eventually she wants to try to do both as well. So she's going to slide the other arm, and now she has head control. I don't have much control over the arms over here. So I'm going to want to do the same thing, slide the arm back, get in the middle here, and slide back get the control over here. Now the drill you can do to develop your fluidity in head control clinch is to have both starting from 50-50 position and we're going to both get the arm on the inside of the elbow keeping contact, slide it to the other head like this and slide the other arm to the elbow like so. And then we can keep on going. This is a good way to develop fluidity and to feel the opponent's strength. So you want to be relaxed here and at the same time resist just a little bit like so. And from 50-50 position, there's a lot of things that can happen. This we call clinch fighting. We can exchange strikes, we can go for takedowns, or we'll be fighting for dominant position. If you don't want to be in this position, it's very simple. You're going to use the cross face escape. So slide the arm in, chin, push away, and she's out. All right, now let's look at body clinch escapes. First up, worst situation you can be in, back body lock. Here. So I have the back body lock. She's going to do the drop and bridge escape. So she's going to do three things simultaneously. First, drop her levels, get her hips down. Then hips forward, pushing with her upper back on my chest to create distance and create stress on my grip over here. At the same time, she turns her hips so that the connection of my hands is lined up with the side of her hip, the sharp part. Then she's gonna push with her hands to eventually break my grip like so. Right away, she's gonna get her hands up and we're back to striking. Once again, a little bit faster, so hips down and away, turn, push with the upper back and break the grip with the hands, we're back to striking. Once again, I'll do it alone so you can see better. So three things. One, hips down. Two, hips away, pushing with the upper back with the twist. And three, hands break the grip like so. Doing all three together, it goes like this. Again. Another situation could happen if you react a little bit late and the person lifts you up is to use the leg hook technique. So it's very simple. The person lifts. As soon as you're in the air, she's going to hook my leg over here and pull on it to bring herself back to the ground to establish stability. Once again, I lift, she hooks, pulls on the leg, and back to the ground. The other situation is going to happen is to have the two arms in variation. In this case, she's also going to do the drop and bridge escape, but she's going to use her elbows to apply pressure against my grip. So same thing, hips drop down, away, and then she's going to use her elbows, push up on the side with her elbows to break the grip, and then she's back to striking. Now there's something you have to be careful for with two arms in variation, is the person in the back can go for a standing rear naked choke. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this technique as well as how to escape in a future video. The drop and bridge escape is also possible with one arm in. In this case, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. So you're going to drop your hips forward. Then the hand that's on the bottom is going to reach on top to grab the hands. The hand that's on top is going to also grab the hands and push away, create distance to break the grip. We're back to striking. So once again, a little bit faster, hips down and away and push on the grip and back to striking. So the other thing you can do from back body lock, if you remain standing, 
most likely the person is going to bring you down. But if you stay on your feet, you can do some strikes. You can do headbutt, rear elbow, and hammer fist to the groin. So headbutt is simply going to bring your head forward and back on the head like this. Back elbow here, turn and elbow to the face like that. So that's why if you have the back body lock, you want to be close here with the head on the inside so the strikes cannot land to your face. You can also do the hammer fist to the groin. So going to the side like this, exposing the groin, and boom, hammer fist to the groin like so. Okay, next situation, front body lock, so chest to chest. She's gonna do the drop and cross face escape. So very simple, she's gonna start by sagging your hips, so hips down here, so it's harder for me to pick her up, and at the same time, hips back as well, taking a step back, putting stress on my grip. Here, she's gonna get one arm here on the inside of my face, and then push the chin away to break the grip, we're back to striking. Once again, a little bit faster, hips down and away, hands in front of the chin, cross face, and escape. The other escape you can do from front body lock is the hip push, elbow squeeze. So in this case, she's also gonna drop her hips and get them away from me, and at the same time, she's gonna push on my hips with her hands. This creates even more distance. Then she's gonna connect her hands together and squeeze her elbows to eventually break my grip like so, and then she's out, and we're back to striking. Once again, a little bit faster, so drop and push the hips away, connect the hands, squeeze, break the grip, back to striking. And the last technique, not quite an escape, but very similar to the head control swimming transition, is the pummeling transition back to 50-50. So in this case, she's gonna get one arm on the inside like this to grab an underhook of her own. Once she has this, I no longer have this underhook, so I might as well go up here and grab her triceps. Now this is a cool drill you can do, the pummeling drill, to program yourself to always go for underhooks. And this will lay a foundation for you to be good in the body control clinch. So we're gonna do the same thing on both sides at the same time. So we're both gonna get one arm on the inside here, go for the underhook, and then grab the opposite triceps at the same time. Now we're switching shoulders. Again, arm in and transition, grab the triceps, so on and so forth. This develops your fluidity and programs your mind to always go for underhooks. Now if you find yourself in this position and you don't want to be there, it's very simple to escape, you can use the shoulder bump to striking technique. So it's very simple, she's going to coil her shoulder back and punch me with her shoulders, creates a little bit of distance and follow up with a punch or elbow and we're back to the striking range. Once again, a little bit faster, so shoulder bump, boom and back to striking. Now, like we said earlier, there's a lot of stuff that can happen from this position. We can be fighting for position, we can go for strikes, or we can go for many different types of takedowns. I'm going to be seeing that in future videos. Alright, so those are the basics of the clinch position. Quick recap, we saw the two types of clinch, which are head control clinch and body control clinch. On head control, we have double head control and single head control, as well as the 50-50 position. In terms of body control, we have the back body lock, front body lock, as well as the 50-50 or over-under position. In terms of head control escapes, we saw what to do in the worst case scenario when the person has broken your posture and is about to knee you in the face, so to use the X block to push back escape. If you manage to stay postured up, we saw the cross face escape, either pushing the head up and back or the head to the side. And we also saw the arm lace escape from postured up double head control. We also saw the swimming transition back to 50-50 head control clinch, which can also be used as a drill to increase your fluidity. And to escape the 50-50 head control clinch, we're simply going to use the cross face escape again. In terms of body control clinch, we saw also what to do in the worst case scenario, which is the back body lock or double underhooks, in which case we're going to use the drop and bridge escape. We saw what to do if the person picks you up, you're going to use the leg hook technique, as well as what to do if you have both arms in or one arm in. For the front body lock, we saw the drop and cross face escape, as well as the hip push, elbow squeeze escape. We also saw the pummeling transition back to 50-50 or over under position. And to escape the 50-50 position, we're simply going to use the shoulder bump to striking technique. Now, I definitely recommend you review these techniques regularly and practice them diligently because this is really the foundational skills that you need to develop your clinch fighting abilities. Later on, we're going to see exactly how to do all the different strikes and how to block them in the clinch position. We're also going to see in detail all the different takedowns you can do in the clinch, such as the sweeps, trips, shoots, projections, and body lock takedowns. And we're also going to learn how to do all the different standing submissions you can do in the clinch, as well as how to escape. Now that will all be for future videos, so if you haven't already, I definitely recommend that you subscribe to our channel right now to stay tuned for those techniques. And lastly, if you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button below, leave us a comment, tell us what you think. It's always good to see what you guys think about our content, and it helps our video get discovered by other users so they can learn these techniques and apply them in their martial arts training. As always, it's been a real pleasure. Till next time, I'm Patrick Fuller. This is Effective Martial Arts. Remember, practice well, safety first, and use these techniques only for self-defense.